Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we're taking a look at another watch from the Slovakian brand Biatech. Now I have reviewed one of their watches before, uh, namely the Corsair, which was kind of a dressy pilot's watch. This time around we're reviewing their other model that they currently have on offer. This is the Majestic, which I guess you could say is an outright dress watch. But before we get into all of those specifications and facts and pros and cons, I figured that I'll show you uh, the box that it comes in because this is arguably one of the nicest boxes that you get with watches in this price tag. I mean, compared to other watch brands and to other watch brands boxes that I have on hand today and that I can show you, it's just night and day. So, so here is, for example, the box that you get with a Sin. And here's the box that you get with an Oris. It's just a cardboard box. And then here's the box that you get with a Longines. So yeah, compared to all of these watches and all of these watch bands that feature uh, timepieces in the same price bracket, this Biatech box looks and feels a whole lot nicer. Now, speaking of Longines, actually, today I am wearing my Hydro Conquest on a nice bond NATO strap and this looks quite nice. I do like the monotone black and white look of this combination. The Longines is a great first luxury watch and a great beater watch if you have more expensive watches and uh, yeah I like it. It's got a very distinct design, it's unique in its own way and its price tag is quite great at around a thousand dollars for an ETA 2892 movement which can also be found as a base movement in my Omega watch. So yeah, the Hydro Conquest, a pretty great watch. So without rambling on any further, let me present to you the Biatech Majestic. And so this specific model is called the Biatech Majestic 05 because it is the fifth variation of the dial. So this has got a blue dial and you will also find other dial options which I'll show on your screen right now. The retail price of this gorgeous looking watch is around 1200 euros. Now let's get into its specifications. It's featuring a 40 millimeter diameter, which is a nice middle ground. It's not too big, it's not too small either. It's got a lug to lug distance of 48 millimeters and the watch is 12.8 millimeters thick, although it does look quite a bit thicker because it has a very flat side profile. Now the case is all polished, so we do not have any brushing anywhere to be found other than on the case back. That does bum me out a bit, but I guess it's fine because it is a dress watch after all. It's got a very nice to operate push in crown with the Biatech emblem there. Does have literally a screwing case back because as you can see, it does feature screws here. So one, two, three, four on each corner of the case back. On the case back, of course, you will find some information about this watch. The case back itself features both polished and brushed finishes. And right here under the sapphire crystal is a 14 karat gold coin, a Biatech coin weighing 3.5 grams. Now I did actually check the price on gold and first I saw that this was supposed to be worth 135 US dollars, but it isn't because that's, I think that's pure gold. But as this is 14 karat gold, it should be worth around $60 instead. So yes, you do have a gold coin worth $60 here on the back. Interesting. It's got, as you can see right up here, a water resistance rating of 50 meters, which is definitely not enough for uh, swimming or showering with this watch, but it is also at the same time quite a lot more than what you would expect of a pure dress watch. On the front here, it of course also has sapphire glass. It does have AR coating, a dual layer of AR coating on the underside of the glass. And it also has a very interesting detail here between the bottom lugs. Here you have a serial number plate, a brushed one with your uh, specific watch number. So as you can see, this watch is number 48. 
The strap is a 22mm brown calf leather strap with a croco pattern. It tapers from 22mm down to 20 here at the bottom. It is quite a thick uh, leather strap and actually when you first get it, it's extremely stiff, although it does uh, soften up with use. We have got a very nicely machined and finished clasp here. It is all polished and has a very three-dimensional look to it. And it does also, as you can see here, have the Biatech emblem here, which does look quite good. The dial here is, as you can see, blue, and it does feature a very subtle sunburst effect. It has got applied and beveled markers, which taper down towards the center. It has, as you can see, a very pronounced sub-dial with the small seconds hand running there at 9 o'clock. In this case, it is a gray sub-dial and it does feature a concentric pattern, which you are not able to see in this video really and not able to see in real life when the watch is on your wrist. However, if you get close enough, you will notice its concentric pattern. The hands are beveled, which gives off nice reflections in different lights. And the styling of the hands is, as you can see, uh, the leaf style. On the top here, we have got the Biatech emblem and text printed onto the dial. And actually, the Majestic model signature down here at 6 o'clock is applied and does give off nice uh, different reflections depending on the light. Now, the movement under here, which we are not able to see in this model, is the Eterna Caliber 3901A. It's an automatic caliber. It beats at 28,800 vibrations an hour, which in combination with the small seconds hand gives that seconds hand a very smooth uh, tick. The movement features a nice amount of jewels, that being 29. It also features a shock absorber, which is nice to see in a dress watch. They have got a rhodium plated finish throughout the movement, although you can't actually admire it, sadly. It's got a very nice a high power reserve of 65 hours and in my testing it did uh, go plus about eight seconds per day which is not great uh, but not bad either it's not too far away from the cost standard but you know it's not quite there either now now there are some pluses and minuses to having an unusual movement like this one first of all with the good things is it's different, which is always fun. It's always fun to have something that not everyone has. And some of its specifications are better than the usual ETA 2824 and 2892 that you would see. For example, it has uh, more jewels. And obviously it also has a much better power reserve as the 2824 only features 38 hours and the 2892 I think features uh, 48. So yeah, 65 is quite a lot better. In terms of the cons of having an unusual movement like this one though, is it's gonna be harder to find somebody to service it. And also it's a very new movement, so we haven't been able to see yet how much it will cost to service and or if it has any issues or anything like that. Um, so yeah, we don't know a whole lot about the Eterna Caliber uh, 39, but um, so far it does perform and it does feature some good specs, so I'm not too worried about that. So with the overview of this watch complete, let's take a look at my personal likes and dislikes of this watch and then let's pop it on the wrist. So for the pros, first of all, I like that it features a very sleek and contemporary design. I also like its very nice size. It's not too small for a guy like me who have pretty big uh, wrists nor is it too big for people with smaller wrists. I like that it has some very interesting details, such as the serial number between the logs, the 14 karat gold coin, and the cool concentric pattern of the nine o'clock running seconds hand subdial. It's got a nice power reserve, as I said, of 65 hours, so that's also definitely a pro. And for the last one, I think it features good value for your money. Now, the only con that I have with this watch is that I do not like that it only features a polished finish. 
Now, don't get me wrong, the actual finish work itself is, is very well done. I can't seem to find any bad parts of polish work here, but I would have loved to see some brushing a little bit here and there because that does make the case design a whole lot more three-dimensional whereas if you only have polishing in my eyes it makes the watch look a little bit cheaper and a little bit more two-dimensional than it really is. So with that said I'm gonna put it on my wrist and I'll show you what it looks like on my 19.5 uh, centimeter wrist. So yeah, as you guys know, I have a pretty large wrist, but this watch does look quite great on my wrist. It's not too big, nor is it too small, so that is definitely good. The leather strap is comfortable, although it is quite wide for a watch of this size. The clasp, as you can see, looks very nice there. And yeah, just overall, I do like the design and feel of this watch. It is quite comfortable. So with all of this said, I would like to thank you guys for watching my review of the Biatech Majestic. Please do feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in watch reviews. Also feel free to comment down below if you have any questions about this watch or feedback or suggestions for future videos. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in uh, my future videos. Bye bye.